Alrighty, boys and girls, here's what we got going on. Annie Bird and I are walking down to La Jolla Resort, and we got Clay down there. Yeah, Clay. Look at that, baby. Perfect timing right there. What's going on, me brother? Everything good? I'm trying to pretend like I know what I'm doing backing into this slip here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you got it. Yeah, Clay. Check out that live well right there. Oh, you're, you're ready to go. <laughs> It was a little hey, tough. Hey, good thing I came late, you know? I know, man. We got time. So that cat right there, just so you guys know, he will try to go into your room. Cat he'll, scratch fever He'll cat? start scratching everything up. Give him cat scratch fever. So I take it you let him in? What's that? I said I take it you let him in? Towards... No, he'll just go in there himself. That's the thing. What's going on, guys? Not much. Not much. Nice it's to nice meet to you, brother. Finally, hand. yes, yeah, yeah you as been well. Been a fan of the channel for a little while now. Same here, brother. I'm it's excited. Nice, nice to be on the same boat. Yeah, yeah it is. It's been, been a long time coming for Clay and I here, so we're stoked. Been planning this trip for a couple months now. We're super excited to get this underway, and no better way to start than showing up with a live well full pill shoots, brother. Dude, the weather too. We got a great day of weather. Good day of fishing ahead. What are you thinking for today? You can do a little bit of mutton snapper fishing maybe, run offshore. I mean, endless options with live bait. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. I mean, dude, just with a live well full of filters like this, I mean, we could try everything. 100%. From patch reefs, maybe drop for some mutton snapper. I don't know, who knows, maybe endless even a sailfish. Options. Yeah, sailfish. Yeah. Dude, we don't know until we try. Let's do it, So let's we, go. We can't catch them at the dock, right? No, no, <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So you guys are staying in the Bahia Lodge, huh? In the Bahia Lodge. You guys got a good we, setup. We I'll got tell some you lavish what. setups. Yeah. So what I'll do is um, I'll hop up, hop up in the tower so you That's guys right. can have the couch right here to Perfect. yourselves. Beautiful. Let's have a good day, man. We got Andy Bird. We are riding out to the ground. We got Clay Man up in the tower. Clay was just telling me about this shoal about a mile or two off of uh, off of our port and what were you saying about this shoal? How does it form, Clay? So basically there's a converging current right here. It's coming from this way and it's coming from this way at the same exact time. So when we get say like a really hard east wind, all this sand gets pushed up onto this shoal and then the converging current basically pushes all that sand together and holds it right in place right here. But this is a really cool area because you'll see a lot of barracudas, which we have right behind the boat. There we go. Check us out. Got one down there. Yeah, and there's really beautiful seagrass here that the turtles like to lay inside of. It's basically like an aquarium right here. There's actually a turtle laying little, on the bottom. A little Three of them laying on yeah. the bottom. Right yeah, here. look at a little sand estuary here. Pretty yeah. sick. And it's kind of like a hard bottom reef break, I guess. Um, because we were driving past it and Annika and I were both thinking when swell comes through here, it's got to be good. Look, that'd be, that'd be a cool little surf spot right there. Yeah, it is really cool here. Surf trip? Surf trip to Island Mirada. <laughs> Clay got us a beautiful live well full of pilchards. We got a nice little pilcher right here. And we're doing some mutton fishing, just like back home, except we're slowly drifting back to this wreck instead of anchoring up in front of it. We're just trying to cover a little bit more ground. Now, normally I would hook my pilchard in the bum right there if I'm on the anchor, but since we're drifting, I'm gonna hook them in the nose like that, or in the mouth, get them out a little bit, and then get my tangle out. Catch anything on a wreck, you know, jacks, yellowtails, mutton, sometimes black fins here, you know, sometimes cobias. A little bit of everything on a wreck. And I like to fish a long leader. 
fishing a 12 ounce lead, three way swivel like that. That's what I like. Get it away from clay. And we're going down. All right, we're about to get a bite. A but little, I could imagine bit. living in Jupiter. Jupiter's a nice area, very nice. Mm -hmm. It's uh oh, you're getting you're getting bit. Whoop. Yeah, you, I don't That's know. That's why you plot the lunchable. I don't know if you got a bait on there. You're definitely getting something whacked it, right? Yeah, for sure. There we go. Yeah, we got something on there. Got to keep the heat on them. <sighs> if you don't get sharked on that clay. Oh. You'd have me starstruck. Man, I shouldn't have said it earlier. Shouldn't have said it. Because then I just gave you the okay to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we typically, a lot of the places that I fish, I don't deal with sharks all that much. That's wild. Yeah, but... Well, good for you then, because... I have seen them on this number here before, but... A lot of the times when I come, it's not typically. Yeah, like for you to be able to fight a fish with a spinning rod here, like you got me starstruck. You You're a big I mean? conventional guy, huh? Oh yeah. It's funny, I've always fished spin. Sliding now. What do you got? Yeah. You got a nice mutton on there, Clay. I hope so, man. He's fighting like it, he's sliding. I don't want to give him any. Tell you what, it's a workout when you're fishing in 300 feet here. Woo! Yes it is. Adam thinks I'm crazy for doing this on a spinning rod right here. I sure do. <laughs> hey, as long as we get them to the boat, right? Agreed, totally. That's the key. I see I some care. sort of color down there. Catch on. I'm wondering if Still this got might some be fight some to him. kind of jackass. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Still got a little bit too much fight to him. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Oh. Nah. It's oh, there's a jack. Dude, he looked pink. Big old amber jack. Almaco. Is that an Almaco? Yeah, this is an Almaco jack. Look at that, man. Fought like, fought like a mutt and he started sliding there at the end. It did. You know, nice Almaco jack though, Clay. Yeah, man, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, brother. It's fun to pretend that it's a mutton for a little while, right? <laughs> no doubt. There you Until go. Until he comes up. I mean, you can just toss him back. All right, no we're going to, yeah, we're going to. He's we're already gonna, in your hand. <laughs> we're going to get our dinner. We're going to throw this guy back. It is a pretty fish and these are actually some of the better eating of, oh, oh. All right. Of the uh If that doesn't Jack make family. you uh <laughs> I love that dude. Hopefully this one's better. Yeah, right. Dude has an Almaco in his hand and then he just says, Whoop. Sorry, no time. Nice dude. Something. Hopefully you have the mutton, man. Yeah, I don't know what we got here. I can tell you that my my uh clamp on the back is loose. That's as much as I know right now. You want me to tighten it? No, no, it's like I'm missing a I'm missing a bolt on the back or a nut. Huh. Come on, baby. Back to back, just like that. Hmm. What do you got here, Clay? I don't know, but you tell me whenever you need some assistance. <laughs> kind of jackass. Yeah. I took you to my jack spot, Adam. Standard wreck. You gotta weave through some jacks to get your mutton. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the game. It's the way it works. Hey, you never know though, right? No. Well, until you start sliding usually, but mm -hmm. all that right there, that's jack-like. You're slid like a mutton at the end though, honestly. Yeah, I did. This is definitely Definitely fighting like a jack. <clears throat> Come on, Jack. Yeah, he's definitely still fighting like one. For sure. Definitely another Almaco. I'll tell you what, I like this whole hand lining thing. Do you? Yeah. Makes me feel like a Cuban. <laughs> That's how the Cubans do it. Oh yeah. They don't they don't go out offshore of the rod. Mm-hmm. My wife caught a uh Probably like a 10 pound mutton on a yo-yo one time. That's sick. <laughs> With the hand line. Go figure, cause she's Cuban. But check that out right there. Two back to back. 
Almacos. Yeah. A little something to get warmed He's up. He's like albino on his forehead there. Mm -hmm. What's up that's, with that? That's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. Like I said, Clay, if you wanted to, we could eat them. I think we're going to catch a mutton, though. Yeah. Let's, let's save it for the mutton. I, I like it. that. Choke it? Yeah, see. he's way down in there. Here, there it is. Oh, you can get that? Yeah. See, look what happens when you get a charter captain on your boat. They got all the tricks of the trade. There he is. I love it, man. All right, here he goes. That wasn't as great no, it was, was, as, no, it as wasn't. I wanted it to be, but hey. I thought he was going to shoot off. Look at him. He's... Adam's wasn't graceful either. Yeah, well, no. hey. well, Mine was going to be graceful, and then I got bit. All right, let's try again. Got to weave through the jacks. Mm-hmm. Hey, something's biting down there, right? For sure. And he's tight right now. On the pen fathom. We got Javier behind the camera. And Clay from Life by the Bow. If you guys have not checked out Clay's channel, it's called Life by the Bow. If you watch my channel, you probably watch Clay's. I have a link to all of his stuff in the description below. We're going to be fishing together for the next few days down here in his hometown in Isla Mirada. We're going to be filming some cool content, so stay tuned for that. There you go. That's pretty cool right there, if I have to say so myself. Yes. What do you think, Annika? I don't know. She's smirking over there. <laughs> so I was dropping down my bait, and I was like, hmm, this is weird. We're in 300 feet, and this thing stopped at probably about, I'd say, 100. So what that told me is, is something grabbed it on the way down. Let's see here. Might be a, you need a hand. Well, here, I'll give you a hand. Yeah, you know what? If I got it, yeah, I get I'll you. take it. Looks like a bonita or something. Yeah, I was about to say something in that family. Tuna, bonita. Uh-oh. Oh, it's definitely fighting like one of them. Yes, it is. Looks like I'll tell yeah, you a bonita what, or a tuna. Uh, it would be nice if it were a blackfin. Yeah, it would. I'll take some If sushi. it's a blackfin, we're going to sit on the anchor here and dump the whole live one. There we go. Now we're talking. Oh no. I'll tell you what, bonita. sushi. Bonita on me. Oh yeah? Yeah, we'll figure it out. There we go. Yeah, it was. We gotta get one in. Hey, I prefer hugs when I got fish on. How about that? Hugs and kisses when you got a fish on? <laughs> I'll hold the kisses part. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds like a good plan. Let's see, let's see, what do Tuna. we got? Oh, a bonita. Is it a bonita? Hard to tell. It looks like a little blackfin. Oh, Looking like a little blackfin. What do we play? got? We got a blackfin, baby. Nice, nice little see? tuna from Clay. Hey, that's not a bad one. Sometimes the small ones are the best ones. Natural born fisherman right there. Oh, there we go. All right. Mm -hmm. What we got going All on here, right. Clay? There we go, Adam. Come on. See if you got your mutton back. I don't know. Kind of jack like. I don't know, Javier. We're grinding it out. Trying to find us a mutton snapper. Did have one on for sure. He was sliding up and Floro just frayed off. It happens. Happens. It's part of the game. I think I'm getting a bite. Yep, I'm getting a bite. We're all the same size jacks. Yeah. So one of the um, look at the look at the parasites on them. See it? Oh yeah. You can get it on camera. Look at that thing crawling around. Annika, you want to eat that? Okay, I'm actually on the parasite cleansing. Uh, Clay's tight. What do you got there, Clay? Hopefully not another jack, man. <laughs> Boys are hoping. <laughs> Boys are hoping. Ooh. Ooh. I'm fishing a little lighter leader than you, Adam. Got him, Adam? I got him. All right. Let's see something good, baby. Oh, flyer just got up right there, too. I like that. Hopefully he's fighting weird. Hey, you never know. You never know. Never know until he's at the top. Never know until he's sliding. Mm-hmm. 
we're tight again. Moving weight. Oh, you're tight, you're tight, you're oh, tight. You're there tight, we go. Tight. I'll take that. Someone's got to remind me. Wow. Yeah, right? Someone's got to pay attention to the rods around here, right? Ah, there we go. All right, Clay. <laughs> I think what happens here is going to determine. Deciding factor. Exactly. Yeah. Deciding factor if we're. If we're I would say pulling the hook, but pulling the trolling motor. <laughs> <laughs> pulling the trolling motor ain't too bad, right? Yeah. A lot easier than pulling 300 feet of rope. Well, here it'd be like 600. Mm hmm. We're living lavish with the trolling motor. This thing ain't really fighting too hard. Woo. Okay. Talk a little bit of, you know, talk a little bit of smack and see mm -hmm. what happens. When you call them small, they get a lot bigger. No doubt. See? So who you calling small right there? Oh, Adams is right here. Shark's on him, or it's bubbles. Yeah. Can't really tell. Looks like bubbles. What do you got? Oh no. Kind of looks like it's got a little bit of pink on it. It does, but some of those jacks have looked pink. Yeah. Looks like a mutton though. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Nice mutton snapper. I'll take that a right deci there. A deciding factor mutton. Is it a mutton? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. I will take that. <laughs> Adam, look at the size of that mutton right there, baby. And we're hooked yeah. up over here. Come on, Clay, man. come on. What do you got? Come on. I don't know, man. Hopefully, we got a mutton. We'll Beautiful see we mutton snap here. right here. You know, we had to do it in front of the camera crew over there. <laughs> Probably about 10, 12 pounds. That's a nice one. That's the one that you Gorgeous. catch on a wreck right there, yes. baby. These are the big wreck fish out in front. Circle hook doing its job. Not usually a circle hook guy, but that's what Clay had in the box, so that's what we're fishing. Hey, gorgeous, gorgeous fish, man. That's why you put in your time right there. That's why you put in your time. Jacks. We've been fishing here for a little bit over an hour. Had to weave through some jacks, but we knew that's part of the game. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you get the right thump, and it's not a jack. That mutton fought 90% of the way up. He didn't really slide much. Yeah. So it's hard to tell it was him, but that's one. Look at that. That is a gorgeous fish. That's a big one, Look dude. at his tail. His tail's bright red. That is a big usually one. got some orange and pink in it, but that one's really red. Thanks, dude. What's up, Jared? Gorgeous fish, Clay. Welcome to the Keys. Adam. Yeah, brother. Nice mutton <laughs> snapper. That's the one we're after. That is awesome, dude. Good for you, man. Thank hey, you, brother. I'm glad you caught him. I can come out here and catch him whenever I want. Typically, you're taking people fishing, but I took you fishing today. Hey, it's nice to get to be on the rod sometimes. Yeah, dude. Good job. All right, Clay, what do we got going on, brother? Well, we got a little hump that we're on top of right now. I'm throwing out some chummers. Hopefully get these tunas a little fired up if they're home. And um, basically the freebies, get everything all fired up on top. And then of course we have our bait right here that has a hook in it. Is that our bait right there? Yeah. And then the goal is that when those tunas and everything else start coming up and frenzying, They'll eat the hook bait here, and then we'll be hooked up to hopefully a nice fish. We've caught, we've caught some blackfin tunas here in the past, some rainbow runners, some really big rainbow runners. Um, but I'm just down for whatever eats, whatever wants a pilchard, poles. You usually can make anything happen with a well full of pilchards. Mm -hmm. Guys, we got a tuna, baby. Yeah, turn it on. Exactly what we came for. We got them, we're hooked up. This is the time of day for the tunas here too, you know? Once that sun starts getting a little lower in the sky, it's feeding time. They're a big eye fish, so they don't really like feeding when the sun's really high in the sky. But, you know, of course, having all the live bait, that's always the key. And believe it or not, I was actually kind of conservative on live bait today. I only filled up one well versus two, and you know, you'd be surprised how much bait will fit in, say, like a 47 gallon live well, like we have here behind us. So, some days you don't even, some days you don't even need a bunch of them. You know, we've just been throwing out two, three, four at a time. Seem to do the job here.
Something I really like doing once these fish get closer towards the boat, I like just loosening the drag just a little bit because once they see that boat, they'll take another run. And I just like taking off as much tension as I possibly can. So as you can see, he's not pulling any drag still by backing off a little ways. But if it gets to the point where I'm pumping, see? Exactly what I was just talking about. He just took his other run once he saw the boat. On the pen slammer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when your drag is really tight, that's where you'll break them off right there. No doubt. So just by backing off just a little bit, you know, that could have been the difference between catching this fish or not. Yeah, it's a nice black fin down there. Nice. You need a gaff? You're going to flip them. Probably not a bad idea to have one, right? Or you know what? Is that a rainbow runner? Oh, uh, no, no a that's tuna. a black fin. It's a tuna. Might as well. I got a small one? three yeah. inch hook right here, Adam. Alrighty. I'll let you get I'll, them right I'll there. Li I'll lip gap them. How about that? There we see go. I, I like be, that. See if I can be that accurate. Save as much meat as you possibly hey, what can. what do you think of that gaff? What do I think of this gaff? It's a nice avail gaff, you know. Look at that. Get right in the gill, straight through the eyeball, and bleeding them all at the same time. Get him out of your boat here. Nice, see, beautiful blackfin tuna. That's why you bring a charter captain on the boat right there. To get it awesome, all dirty? dude. Well, no. Good gaff shot. Thank you, brother. Nice, nice black fin tuna. Yeah, that's not a bad one. No, at not all at right all. There, man. That's a beautiful little golden football there. Dude, look at how perfectly you're bleeding them too. That's awesome. It's getting it all done in one shot here. Mm-hmm. Beautiful fish, Clay. Nice Thanks, shot, brother. Dude. Thanks for the gaff shot. Yeah, there. man. Thanks for having me down here in the keys. Put them on ice, Clay. What do you think? Sounds oh. like a plan. I don't want to put them anywhere else. <clears throat> Neither do I. You don't want to put them back in the water? <laughs> Beautiful. The box is looking good, man. Yes, it is. Got a nice little variety. We got our little black fin here that we're gonna turn into some sashimi. I just figured what better way to show Adam and Annie the island with a little bit of fresh black fin tuna there. And when it comes to filleting fish on the water down here in the Keys, legally you have to be on land. But Looking at the Garmin chart plotter, Garmin actually has this marked as an island now. So, I guess it's safe to say that this is land, but just a little bit of info. So let me ask you, do you ever think anything like this existed in the Keys? Like an this, island this like little this island? Offshore? No, not at all. That's why I was shocked when we were rolling up here. It does not look like the Keys to me. Like I was saying that Clay, it looks like a little secluded island in the Bahamas. It's beautiful. It's funny too, because I always get people asking me if this is the Bahamas, and I'm like, nope, just a little island right here off the Florida Keys. And you know, a lot of us locals, I hate to say it, but we kind of keep it hush hush. For sure. Because as you can see, the more people that we tell, this place kind of gets blown out. No Unfortunately, doubt. it's kind of just the way that it is now. Because the way that the world is nowadays, but it's cool to have it to ourselves today. Eat. Shark bait now. Oh yeah. But I got um, a little bit of lemon, some soy sauce, and some wasabi and ginger. We're gonna mix all that up, finish preparing this uh, tuna right here. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest things that I like doing with sashimi is I like making sure that the meat does not hit the table. I try to keep it as pure and as clean as possible because when this fish is sitting in the fish box, you know, sometimes the skin of the fish can touch bait or, you know, maybe something that the fish regurgitated once he went inside of the box. So as you can see, 
This is about as clean as the fish fillet can possibly get. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, brother. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing with this other one here. On top of the fact that when you're cleaning a fish like tuna and or wahoo, you get a lot of that black residue underneath the skin. So like Clay saying, I'm the same way. I don't like it touching the table. And if I'm gonna make a cut on the bloodline or the pin bones, I'll leave it on the skin and do that work first because you're about to eat this fish raw. You know, you don't want it to touch anything that's not, not sanitary or appetizing. And I think I actually skipped that step, so it's yes. a good, good thing that you mentioned it. Yes. But we'll do a little bit of fine tuning now. What do you think is the best way to do it? Just rinse the table again? Yeah, I would just rinse the table. You want me, here, I'll go down there. If you don't mind, man, no, thank no, you. No, 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 no. You demand. Ooh, is like all the little conch shells and stuff like that. And like some of these pieces of coral Ready, over Annie? here, like look at how big that piece is right there. Nice. You see how big that piece is, Adam? Isn't that crazy? What, that rock? Yeah, like just massive pieces of dead coral. It just goes to show you how powerful the ocean is to actually push all this stuff up no here. No doubt, it's crazy. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Feel free to critique me, Adam. No, no. I feel like, you know, you probably have a lot of good input if you see something. You're doing fine, brother. It's, it's also tough with a little tuna because there's a lot you gotta cut out in a tuna, you know, mm -hmm. for, for that sashimi grade filet. And, but just as one fish will feed all four of us for a little snack, you know, and then we'll be able to have some energy to get back in the water go catch some lobsters, maybe shoot a mutton snapper, see what happens. Isn't it crazy? It is crazy. Like just, what are we doing here, Clay? <laughs> <laughs> Living, off Living off the land. It's so funny because I've gotten people writing in the comments like, oh, it's just so much cheaper to go out there and catch your own fish. And I mean, it's so much cheaper to buy. just buy your own fish. And you know, they just don't understand what we understand when it comes out here and kind of like getting back to some type of roots that we all came from right 100%. but i mean like what what's your whole perspective on all of it like what is it that like it's fulfilling keeps, fulfilling it's funny like being I find able, it to be yeah. the same way being able to come out on your own you know what i mean with obviously there's other boats around but you're doing your own thing you're on your own gig hunting game and then coming back and be able to clean it and enjoy it with people, it's fulfilling. Especially with Victor cooking today. Yeah, man. dude. It's a so, lot more fulfilling when I get to watch mm -hmm. so <laughs> and for, enjoy. For those of you that don't know, Victor from Land Shark Outdoors is actually gonna be joining us tonight and he's gonna be cooking for us. So you guys get to see a little, my, little bit of my sashimi work and then we'll show you the good stuff later on tonight. Yeah, Victor's a good cook. You guys are going to want to stay tuned for that portion of the episode. I can assure you that. And I will have an appetite tonight. Right? Especially after diving. Oh, yeah. What do you think? How's that look, Adam? I think it looks great, brother. Pretty good, right? I think we're ready to eat some sashimi. Yeah, man. Real quickly, before we eat this sashimi, I'm going to share with you guys the lodge that we've been staying at in Isla Mirada for the past week. En la Casa de la Hoya. In the island Marala. This is the house we've been staying at in the key so far. It is called La Jolla, if you haven't heard me already say it. Um, it's the, actually the Bahia Lodge, but you can also say at the resort. This place is sick, let me give you a little tour. This has been our kitchen for the week. Been cooking out of here. Pretty nice place. That is the living room in there. It is a large roomy area. I think there's sleeps five beds or something. Four beds maybe. This was Annika and I's room. Really liked it in here. You get, obviously, the view outside. That's actually Annika. Right there. Putzing, reading a book, eating some fruit. Looks like she's on the phone, maybe chopping block. She was using some Italian hand gestures there. But yeah, this is her place. See a little tour of the bathroom. Nice big shower 
Nice place. We had a nice time here. Nice big bathroom, big closet, everything. Yeah, guys, like I said, move and wait 10 is your discount code. It is popping up right here if you guys want to come stay here. That's the code I advise you using is move and wait 10 because you can save some money off on your stay. And this place is sick. We got some crazy lighting going on because the outside world. So then here's your living room, right? Come over here. And this is the outside world. A huge thank you to Gabrielle and Doug for this experience. Like I said, awesome time. Come check them out. This place is really cool. Um, definitely the coolest place I've ever seen in Island Morano, that's for sure. Cheers, Clay. Cheers. Yeah, brother. Oh, oh I'm oh. in the sauce. <laughs> that's awesome. Good? Mmm. Sorry, guys. The man behind the scenes needs a bite. Mmm. Javier. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not going to do you like that. You deserve a piece just Ooh, as much as we do. That's some tender blackfin. It's good, right? Really good. We bled them really well, too. Yeah, and especially when you let them rest on ice, you know what I mean, for a couple hours. Or a couple days. Or a couple, well, I didn't want to say because <laughs> They say great minds think alike. <clears throat> yes, they do. And you can see the tuna actually whitened, or the lemon actually whitened the tuna a little bit because that citrus in the lemon will actually cook the tuna. So I guess you could say we seared it. Mm -hmm. Crazy how fast it happens like that. Yeah, it was five minutes in the sun and it's starting to get white. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Oh, that's a good pre-dive snack. Mm -hmm. I just got a sand sesame seed. How was it? A little crunch never hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. My teeth are like falling out, but we'll live. What do we got, Annie? Zephyr Hills. <laughs> La agua. Muchos buenos por tu. We are about to hop in, appreciate you, and do a little bit of diving. It is absolutely gorgeous day here in the Keys. Clear water behind me. We are just leaving our lunch spot and about to hop in the water, catch a couple lobsters, maybe shoot a mutton snapper. I don't know, we will see what happens, but we are gonna take you guys along underwater. It has been an epic day so far, let's get in. Yeah, baby. Looks like a keeper. Look at the size. No, no, no. Woo! Good grip. All right, throw them in. Nice job. All right, let's go get another one. Oh, please got one. Yeah, please. Found a couple nice ones, so they're checking it out. You want to put them on ice? No, you can throw them in the live wall. In this guy? There we go. <laughs> That was a 
green moray right behind him now. I know. Yeah, dude, that's another nice one. I don't want to grab that one, the moray. You see the moray? No, I didn't see it. He just backed into a moray hole. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need to measure that one. That's a nice one. A couple more and they fall right down here. Sweet. <laughs> Another bug, Javier. Bugs for dinner. There's one more lobster in there that is being an absolute pain. And he is doing circles around the coral head <laughs> like I've never seen. This lobster's been messed with before. This guy, not so much. Not so happy. You want to fall out over here? because I'm on a little good head. Thank you, Mr. Clay. I appreciate you doing the honors. Yeah. On Adam's mutton here. It's everyone's mutton, man. So for those of you that don't know Victor, he has a YouTube channel, Land Shark Outdoors, in addition to all of us. And uh, if you haven't seen it, you're probably new to YouTube. He has tons of videos from South America, you know, up in North America, Bahamas, anywhere and everywhere where there's a fish. Victor's probably been there catching it, cooking it, cleaning it. He's an awesome cook. So we handed the mutton snapper over to him in addition to some of the lobster that we caught. And he's gonna be doing the honors and cooking up something really, really nice for us. Something more than I think that me or Stephanie could probably ever do. Appreciate it, Clay. Of course. Thank you. It's an honor to cook for these guys. So we got a gorgeous mutton snapper that the boys and girls caught the other day, so let's fillet it up. Got Clay's avail knife right here, starting right here by that peck fin. Gonna go right here into the head meat, and then we're gonna swivel that knife around 
and we're gonna work all the way from the head to the tail, just kind of outlining our fish. This is the foundation of your fillet, right? Beautiful right. scales flying off this mutton snapper. No prettier fish to have at your fillet table than this guy right here. I think a lot of people, when they come to the Keys, they think yellowtail snapper dolphin. And, uh, and although a mutton is fairly common, I feel like it doesn't get as much love and attention that it deserves. I think it is the best eating snapper in the ocean, in my opinion. I know Adam really likes them. Smart, hard fighting say, fish. Vic, have you ever had a 12, 15 pound Kubera? Those are pretty tasty too. Harder to come by for sure. Harder to come by. So just basically separated the flesh all the way to the backbone right there. Gonna lift up this shoulder meat and we're gonna break through the pin bones. So we're gonna go right on top of the rib cage. And you're gonna hear it kind of snap. We get through those pin bones. Gonna go over the rib cage, down on the other side of this backbone. A lot of people struggle with big snapper because of this rib cage right here and they try to saw through it. There's this just little set of pin bones right here you gotta break through and it makes your life so much easier. Once you get that uh, repetition in there and you really feel it out, it becomes so easy. Look at that. Beautiful piece of fish right there. And what we're gonna do is, a lot of times when you fillet a fish, you wanna take the skin off. I actually wanna prepare this on the half shell for you guys on the grill. So we're gonna leave the skin on and it's gonna act like a natural barrier, kind of like aluminum foil or a baking dish. So we're gonna leave that on. It's one of my favorite ways to prepare snapper. Your fish comes out so juicy. What do you think of that, Clay? I think that's awesome. So you're gonna leave the scales on it too? Yeah, so the way we're gonna eat it though is we're gonna grill it, but mm -hmm. the skin separates the scales. So when it's finished, you don't get any scales in your final product. It's a really cool way to eat it. I love that. Have you ever had it like that? No, I never have. And wow. I think that that's what's so cool about you cooking. You know, you're gonna show me something that we would probably never think twice about doing. I'm telling you, you're gonna steal this recipe from now on. Yeah, no. I'm just gonna have to bring you everywhere with me instead. Uh, hey, uh -huh. an excuse to go to the Keys? I'll take it. <laughs> on the half shell, it's good stuff. Good st you can peel like once, once it's fully cooked too, the meat flakes right off the mm -hmm. skin. Your fish stays really juicy because it doesn't dry out because that skin and scales, when it's on the half shell, locks in the flavor. Mm -hmm. But hey, I will tell you, Clay, this is a nice cleaning station here at La Jolla. It sure is. House in the backyard, cleaning station right here, boat right there. It's a nice I, little setup. I heard that Victor's always here filleting everybody's fish for him too, right? Every time. So as soon as you pull <laughs> up, he's just standing there. I just never leave. At your assistance. It is a beautiful spot though, you know? Totally. And Voila. this place, this place is legendary as well. Side. Clay, it is done. Thank you very much, good sir. Like I said, I could get used to this. Clay said that he was really relieved that we were cooking. I said, anytime, man. I, the clean and cook is my favorite part of any single video. I like the fishing part, but cooking and seeing the joy on people's faces when they eat a good meal, that's what does it for me. Today, we're teaching Annika how to ring out a lobster. All right, Annika, so it's pretty straightforward. This one's dead because Clay already killed him. And most of the time, if he's alive, you're gonna to wanna to use gloves because of all the spikes here. Mm -hmm. But you just get a good get a good grip on him. And actually, you can fold the tail like that so you don't have to touch those spikes. And then one hand goes this way and the other hand goes the other way. And nice you just twist. twist, twist all the way around in a 360 and that's... That's that? That's that. And then after that, we'll go from there. Fold the tail on itself so you don't have to touch the spikes. There you go. You gotta put some pressure. There you go. Perfect. Now I know there's yes. sort of thing. So now break off the antenna right there. No, right? Right here. There you go. And now nope. To the other side around. So you see right here. See that? Mm -hmm. That is his indigestion tract, or digestive tract, whatever you want to call it. And see how there's barbs on the spine here, or on the antenna, and they pull backwards. You're gonna go in there, push in there, then twist around and come out. You gotta get it in there good though. A little bit more, yeah, now twist. 
you know, slowly come out. So, came out the wrong end, Annika. But that's what you're looking for right there. And if you actually eat it. No, you can eat them. I'm okay, thank you. Okay. You can eat them. No, I'm okay, thank you. Take the lobster's there pistol. There we go. Okay. Lobster's pistol. That's it. Is it an aphrodisiac? Couple little scraps on there. Ready for the kitchen. See you guys inside. All right, check it out guys. So we got, we're gonna do a little mutton snapper on the half shell on the grill. That fish is looking mighty beautiful. And then what I did is the lobster that they caught today. Um, I saved one to show you guys, but basically I'm taking the meat out of the shell. We're gonna dice it up and make a really delicious lobster stuffed baked potato. But we're gonna dice that lobster meat real fine. Some garlic, some chive, and we're gonna saute it and put it on top of the potato. So what I'm gonna do is, it's much easier to do this when a lobster's already been frozen. Lobster meat does not come out of the shell very easily unless it's been frozen. And lobster actually freezes very well. Fish, not as much, but lobster, you cannot taste the difference between fresh lobster and frozen lobster, I promise you. So I'm just taking my knife and kind of just getting underneath that meat. Trying to separate it the best I can. And I'm just gonna come out with little chunks just like this and I'm just gonna continue to do this until we get all the meat out of the shell. And I'm gonna put them back on the cutting board. And we're just gonna kind of go along here with our chunks of lobster and just break it down into nice little bite-sized pieces. Lobster can be very chewy, so when you do nice little small pieces, they become a little more tender and easier to work with. Yep. Very simple, mutton snapper, super flavorful, really flaky, does not need much, especially when it's on the grill. You get that good grill flavor, so you already know, going down with the garlic powder. So since this fish is on the half shell, we're not gonna be able to season the other side, so a generous amount of salt. That salt will go down deep into the meat, and it's best to do it ahead of time, so that way you flavor that meat. Okay, and then some freshly cracked pepper. Look at those biceps, Vic. Did you save some muscle for the rest of us, man? This is what we got going on right now. We got Denny, and we got Javier. Too many cameras in one kitchen. Victor's getting uh, triple cameraed. And I made a mistake, I should have done this before, but we're not living in the past, so. A little olive oil on our fish. If you put the olive oil on before, it would just be better, because you could brush it on. So, next up is we're gonna make a chimichurri. When that fish comes off the grill, I wanna brush it with a nice, fresh chimichurri. So I already have some chopped cilantro and parsley here, about equal parts. That's pretty much the entire uh, head of cilantro and parsley. It gets really fine when you bunch it up like that. And what we're gonna do is hit it with a generous amount of olive oil. And tell me when to stop, Clay. We'll see if you get it right. Stop. Wow, I think we should do some more. Some more? <laughs> All right, hey, I was just playing it safe. Better safe than sorry, right? You're on vacation. The calories don't count, right? Uh, the calories always count, Victor. Yeah. Not when you live in the Keys. When you have this metabolism, they always count. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then for a little sweetness, it's not sugar like Paula Dean would like, but we're gonna do some honey. I like it because it thickens it up and gives it a good sweetness. And then for our acidity, we're gonna do some fresh lime juice. Okay, and we gotta get some salt in there. And we have some finely minced shallots as well. Okay, and now we give it a good mix. So this is a really nice finishing sauce for basically anything. Chicken, fish, steak, you could put it on pretty much anything. Helps balance out flavors, and uh, it's looking a little dry, so I'm gonna hit it with some more olive oil. 
and lime juice. Pull the grill out here at La Jolla and the mutton snapper is going on the grill. So like I was saying, you guys see that skin and scales? That is going skin side down onto the grill. It is nature's baking sheet. How did you figure that out, Victor? Um, I think it was honestly another YouTube video. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we saw another YouTuber do it, and Brooke was the first one to do it, and we've been doing it ever since. It's uh, it, it's an easy way to cook fish. They, I'm telling you, something about cooking them with that skin underneath, like the moisture can't leave the fish. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Your fish just comes out so tender. You know what I think is so cool about that is people don't understand the value of YouTube and how much you can actually gain from it if you watch the right creator. Because it's so funny, I was just telling everybody earlier, the way that I actually learned how to yellowfin tuna fish was by watching Adam's videos. And, you know, here I am <laughs> filming content with him now, yep. and then I'm living it with you as we're filming together, and it's so cool because yep. I used to watch all of you guys because I would learn so much. There was so much value. Um, like I said, when you're watching the right person, so, you know, I just think it's so cool just putting everything together Absolutely. and learning from you right here in the flesh. And you pick everyone's brain. Clay, what I really appreciate about his video is he's an amazing storyteller. The way he envisions the day and tells the story from beginning to end makes you want to just come down here and just spend as much time on the water. I appreciate it. You really sell the lifestyle. I appreciate it. Well, my wife does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna close up the grill and it could take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. We're just gonna keep checking on it from time to time and that's it. Some garlic. Just gonna cook it for about 45 seconds, wake it up, let that garlic infuse with that olive oil. Garlic is done. Now we're going in straight with the lobster and I didn't season it because since we're making like a, a mixture, I'm just gonna season the whole mixture and then the lobster will get seasoned. Just seasoning with some more salt and pepper. We can do dinner. You didn't even have to go to the gym today, man. This is a workout, I'll tell you what. Next up, green onions. Lobster cooks super fast. Three, four minutes on a medium heat. Last thing you want to do is overcook lobster. Butter, grass fed, pat and broth. So last step, the heat is super low right now. We're going in with cream cheese. Cream cheese is gonna give it that nice thickness that you would get with any type of stuffing. And that's just gonna melt down. <laughs> you see how that skin is still attached there? Watch how easily it comes off. Look at that. Juicy fish, skin stays on there. You can see the moisture in there. I'm gonna go down with that homemade chimichurri. Are you smiling because yeah. of how good it looks? No, watching your faces, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that does really look good, though. Okay, we got a little baked potato. And I'm actually, I want to like crunch it up so that juice seeps inside. Why don't you use a fork? Yeah, right. She well, always is, right here. That's, that's, that's why we get married, right? Yeah, when my brain doesn't work, hers is always working. Look at that. That's homemade Florida lobster caught in the keys today, stuffing going on the baked potato. So you don't, unbelievable. Yeah, you don't need any butter or cream cheese or anything. That is your stuffing for your baked potato right there. Might be the first time I agree with the baked potato. Guys. Right? <laughs> Would you like any cheese? Yeah, that's fine. You can and then add. some Parmesan cheese to finish it off. Okay, it equal. Thank you so much. You're yeah. Welcome. It's a pleasure. All right. Ready? Pleasure's ours. All right. 
don't even do it. Wait, I'm going. This is really good. Is it? And you do this at home. That looks really the good. best, in my opinion. I mean, it, it all looks good. Oh, no, that it's looks, great. That looks amazing. Good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> She's jumping for joy in there. <laughs> but just so cool at the same time how you guys ended up coming down mm -hmm. when La Jolla put this whole thing together for us. And, you know, we've worked with La Jolla multiple times in the past. And one of the biggest reasons why is just because there's always just such a good vibe with the people that are associated with this place. And that's exactly what you get when you guys come down here. They're always super open to all the cool ideas that we have with all of us collaborating together. And it was an absolute pleasure getting Adam and Annie down here on the boat. It's the coolest thing in the world to just meet them and, you know, go out there and catch some fish. And then, of course, have Stephanie. I came us. in for the best part, the eating <laughs> That's aspect right. of it. <laughs> and, Victor, I can't yeah, thank, thank you and Brooke you enough so thank you for guys. all of this. Thank and, you. And, you know, a lot more to come, hopefully, with all of us getting together and shooting some content. It's my turn. Appreciate you, Vic. Listen, anytime I get to have one of Victor's meals, it's always a pleasure. An amazing chef. That's what we got right there. On vacation, too. Home away from home. It's good stuff right there. Really good stuff, Vic. How's that baked potato? I know you've been waiting for it. <laughs> you know I'm not a big baked potato guy. Only because you got to talk to it up. Now, sweet potato, that's sweet. You just eat it. But this is a real stuffed baked potato. If you're gonna stuff a baked potato, you better do it with lobster, just like that. It's good stuff, Vic. Really good stuff. That is really good. We are enjoying an amazing meal here at La Jolla. If you guys have not already, on every single channel you're watching, go ahead, drop a like, subscribe if you have not already. If you're not, you're missing out. Thank you, brother. It's been a great time. A new time. Yeah. Was that the bad hand? I'm it was. Sorry. No, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> it was worth it though, right? It was. It was worth the handshake. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do it again sometime for sure. I mean, you were welcome work. on my boat anytime. Appreciate it. Same back home. And like I said, you know, on my version of the video, if it gets 10,000 likes, we're going to have to do a Bahamas trip together. Yes. So. <laughs> 10,000 likes, we're going to the islands. That's it. What do we think, Vic? I'm going with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 20,000 likes and Victor comes too. <laughs> That's asking a lot. <laughs> hey, anything's possible. 2024. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, go ahead and check out La Jolla Resort in Isla Mirada. It is an awesome place, awesome little hole in the wall to stay at. If you're looking to fish, hang out with the family, do whatever. It's a great place in the Keys. But that is all we got for you guys today on the Moving Weight channel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Moving Weights out.